Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to do in today's video is take a look at an under tray that a viewer of this channel has built for his own car. It's Nate's under tray. Now the car is a Passat wagon, and what has he done underneath it? Well, he's made a very large under tray. This is only part of it, and it's made from 1.5 millimeter thick aluminium sheet. Now, aluminium sheets are really good material to make an under tray from, because even if it's near to the exhaust, it won't catch fire, unlike, say, a plastic under tray. But 1.5 millimeter thick aluminium sheet has got not a lot of stiffness, not a lot of rigidity, and as you can see here, this is a very large under tray. So what Nate has done is he's made a 25 millimeter, one inch square steel tube frame. He's welded that together to give the under tray the rigidity and shape that is needed. So this is looking towards the front of the car and he's made the under tray in a couple of pieces. This is just one piece. Towards the back of the car, he's made this section, which incorporates an 11 degree sloping rear diffuser. Now it doesn't need to have strakes or longitudinal parts. A flat under tray that slopes upwards at the back of the car will still work very, very well in improving under tray efficiency. So looking from the front of the car, we can see this part here. Now this part doesn't have a frame underneath it, and the reason it doesn't have a frame underneath it is because it's curved. It curves downwards by about 25 millimeters under the engine. Now a downwards curve like that increases flow speed past this part of the under tray, giving a lowered measured pressure and therefore less lift or even downforce. And that's what's been achieved here. Incidentally, Nate's thinking of adding some parts here and here, which might even further reduce drag. At the back of the car, here is that diffuser with a cutout for the tow hook. Now you can see Nate's covered the complete exhaust. You want to do that only if you are using a non-combustible material and you have a rigid frame that holds the under tray a certain fixed distance from the exhaust. Uh, you do not want stuff touching the exhaust. So what's the result? Nate says at 65 miles an hour, the car feels amazing on the road. It feels just planted and incredibly smooth. And that's exactly what I found with my Honda Insight under tray. You really don't know what you're missing until you've got it. Uh, you get so used to feeling lift on cars uh, that when you suddenly don't have that lift, you can't believe how transformed it is. It's not airy fairy, it's not theory. It's something you can distinctly feel as Nate has. He also says it's quieter on the road with less wind sound. And that would also make sense because normally the airflow under the car is separating and turbulent and the, the, the vibration of that air shakes the, the, the floor of the car creating noise. Suddenly you just have a smooth airflow under the car and you would expect less noise. You would also expect less noise from the engine simply because you now have a cover under it, whereas before that noise could more easily transmit itself to the cabin. He says early testing of fuel economy is showing about a four miles per gallon increase. An under tray, a good under tray, a large under tray, and a large smooth under tray with a rear diffuser is the easiest modification an amateur can make to really make a huge difference in terms of both lift and drag. Find out more about under trays in this book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. It's available from Amazon. It's available from all good booksellers right now. Thank you.